Hello, everyone. So good to be with you, as always. A friend of mine told me that a few years ago, her teenage daughter set out to go to the mall one afternoon. And on her way, an angel's voice came to her and said really clearly, turn around and go home. And the voice was so loud and compelling, almost screaming, that the girl decided to listen and she went home. When she got home, she learned that at the exact time she would have been there, it was tragically a mass shooting at that mall. She would have been right there. So who is it? What is it on the invisible side of life that guides us and protects us when we need it? Some call them angels, spirit guides, departed loved ones, the Holy Spirit. It goes by different names. But the truth is that there are beings, living interdimensional beings who exist beyond the view of our physical eyes who walk with us and guide us and love us and say, go here, don't go there, be with this person, don't be with that person. Of course, in Miracles tells us, if you knew who walked behind, if you knew who walks beside you on the path that you have chosen, fear would be impossible. And in one of the other lessons of the Course, it advises us to ask a thousand times a day, who walks with me? Who walks with me? Who walks with me? Somebody walks with you. You may not know their name or what they look like, but we have guidance, we have love. So a wonderful video, which I'll post in the comments to this video about a woman many years ago who was destitute. Uh, she was newly divorced and she had two sons, two young sons. And it was her husband was not paying her child support. And she looked in the refrigerator, it was just a hot dog and a Coke. That was it, something very little. And she, um, the, the holidays were coming up and she just did not know what she would do even to feed her family for the holidays. And it was just before Thanksgiving. And she went down to the ground floor in her apartment complex. And there's a lovely older woman who met her and introduced herself. And she said, well, why don't you and your boys come to my place for Thanksgiving? And the woman agreed. And they went to this beautiful, lavish meal, like a feast. And all the woman and her kids' favorite foods were there. It was like this lady was, knew exactly what was on her mind. And she seemed to know things about this family that no one could possibly know. And they had a lovely, lovely Thanksgiving dinner. And everybody was so happy. And for the first time in a long time, this woman felt we're going to be okay. Somehow we're taken care of. And so the lady gave her some Tupperware containers containing leftovers to take it back for the boys. And they went home and had a very good night's sleep. And the next morning, this woman went back to this lady's apartment with the Tupperware containers to return them. And she knocked on the door and no one answered. And she looked in the window and the apartment was entirely empty. <laughs> there wasn't a stitch of furniture in the whole apartment. And she was bewildered because we just had this great feast there hours ago. Now what happened to the woman under furniture? And she went to the superintendent of the complex and she said, what happened to that lady in, in that apartment? And the superintendent said, oh, that apartment's been vacant for months. So uh, I'm posting this video in the comments if you want to find it and watch it yourself. So how did that happen? You know, the lady, there's no other conclusion but that that was an angel. And the whole event was manifested as an act of grace to uphold this woman and her kids for the holidays and to give her faith. 
And this lady also went on to become an, like an angel volunteer, I forget the exact term, but she, she established this program of grace where she would help destitute families as a result of the grace that she received. So we do have grace. There's a law of karma and the law of grace and law of grace supersedes the law of karma. Paramahansa Yogananda, the great author of Autobiography of a Yogi said this, grace supersedes karma. You think that you live in a universe that is ruled only by karma, but I say that there's a rule, there's a universe lived by, there's a universe ruled by grace. And this is exactly what Jesus came to teach. In every situation, he offered forgiveness and comfort and release where the religious leaders of the time offered only punishment and retribution. One time I was living in this um, organic gardening community in New York State. And one time I was driving a dump truck for the community and we were approaching this little town. I was driving by myself actually. And as I'm approaching this town, a voice came and said to me, slow down because these two little kids are gonna run in front of the truck as you approach the town. And it was very specific. It wasn't just, it would be a good idea to slow down. Now it's time to slow down. Those two kids are going to run the truck. So I slowed down to just five miles an hour. And sure enough, as I approached this town, this town, there were two little kids playing on a lawn and they ran into the road in front of the truck. And fortunately, I was able to stop easily. So there's no problem. So who whispered to me? And who walks with you? And then another time, I was about 18 years old, and uh, in a dream, it wasn't even a voice, it was just a knowing. And they said, your father's going to die in five weeks. And I wrote this off as just a random dream. It wasn't scary, even, it was just like a fact. And then five weeks later to the night, my father passed away suddenly. Now, how can I know that? He wasn't, he wasn't ill, uh, he was no impending illness. He just, it was his time. And how can I know that? There are, there are, thing, <laughs> there are more things on heaven and earth and heaven and earth, Horatio, than <laughs> your knowledge base knows. So can we celebrate the fact that we are guided, that we're never alone? that somebody's taking good care of us and our kids. A lot, of, a lot of parents worry about their children. And some tell me, you know, I used to worry, but then I just send my angels to be with them. I ask their angels to guard them and guide them. And so far, so good. So if there's somebody you're worried about, your pets, your children, a loved one, maybe someone you know is, is in the military, just, put light around them and say, angels, speak to them, guide them. There are many, many stories, war stories of people who've heard a disaster because an angel told them to go in a different direction. And what about people angels? What about pet angels? I, I, dogs are angels with fur. If you're a dog lover, you've heard this. Um, once I was working in this restaurant, New Jersey, and I took a break in the afternoon when I was cooking dinner. And I took a break and I stepped outside. And there was this a man I'd never seen. He just, it was like a little side street. It was this rural town. And this little a man came up to me. And he said, how are you doing, my friend? I said, how are you doing? And he was so eager to connect. And he had a light in his eyes and a smile on his face. He said, you know, life is wonderful, isn't it? He said, there's so many good things available to us. Let us, let's step, I, I used to be so depressed and so unhappy. And then I led God into my life. I led joy into my life. I was happy. I, I just made a conscious decision that my life was to be a light. He said, since that time, I'm happy. He said, I, I walk with a light step and my heart is open and my, my soul is free. He says, I'm so grateful to be alive. 
may I shake your hand? He shook my hand. And he was just the sweetest, most buoyant, lively, happy man I'd ever met. And I was just, I just felt so healed just to be with him for, for a minute. And I, I ran into the store to tell my partner who was cooking with her. I said, you got to meet this guy. Come on out. And I grabbed her hand and we ran out and he was gone. And it wasn't the city street. It was just a rural area. It was one street. And we went up and down the street and he, he was gone. And I think he might have been an angel who came to give me a message of love. That's, that's how unexpected sometimes these things happen. I'll tell you one more a good story about it. I had a friend named Peter, who was a musician in Philadelphia. And one day he had a really bad day. His girlfriend broke up with him. And he went to his uh, engagement that night to play at this club. And he found out that the group had been fired. And it was just like everything was going wrong. And as he was walking home on the streets of Philadelphia with his guitar in hand, he just, he was so overwhelmed that he just broke down and he fell to his knees and just wept. Didn't care who was watching him. And at that moment, a little puppy dog found his way, a stray dog found his way under this man's arm, under Peter's arm, and he started licking the tears off his cheeks. And suddenly <laughs> someone said, there's no better therapy than a puppy. And in that moment, it was true for Peter. So Peter gained faith once again. He figured that this dog was sent to him as a messenger to, to just keep going. And he got up and he walked home. And this dog followed him home and he sat on his porch. And when he got home, he found that his girlfriend had come back. She had decided she still wanted to be with him. And she said that someone had called, that the manager had called of the musical group and they'd got into a better gig that replaced the one they had lost. So all of a sudden, this guy's life turned around on a dime. And he told his girlfriend about this puppy who had walked him home. And he took her out to the porch to see him when the puppy had disappeared. So things like this happen. And perhaps some of you have your own story. When I tell stories like this in my workshops, everyone raises their hand because a lot of them have an angel story or a message from a departed loved one story or some kind of intervention or miraculous healing. People want to tell these stories because they offset the story of the world that is so dark. If you sit and watch the news all day, you're going to get depressed because most of it's fear-based and terror-based and aberration-based. So no wonder people get depressed from watching the news. So we need to tell our miracle stories and our healing stories to put our mind back in our right mind. My teacher Hilde used to say, if you have a miracle, if you have a healing, if something wonderful happens, it's your duty to tell it, to give faith to people who may be downtrodden at that moment. Now, the, the caveat is that don't tell it immediately because you want to wait till it gels sometimes. It's up to you. But Jesus did a healing on somebody. He says, see that, tell no man. And his philosophy is, well, you know, once, once the healing is solid and you're firm in it and you know what's happened and it's real to you, then you share it. But if it's still in process and you still feel kind of tender about it, then keep your mouth shut. And when it's gelled, and it's solidified, then that's time to broadcast it. But when you do broadcast it, it will be healing to others. See, the miracles that you receive are not given just for you. They're given for the world. So it's your obligation to broadcast them. And if you're familiar with Joseph Campbell's uh, Hero's Journey, uh, it's, it's a wonderful model. A lot of you know it. Anyway, the idea is you go through trials and adventures and you have help and you have adversity. And then you triumph and you get the holy grail because the gift of a spiritual triumph is, is wisdom. It's connection to spirit. It's a broader awareness. And that's the holy grail. It's the chalice. And Joseph says that it's your, it's your duty now 
the, the hero's journey is not complete until you bring the gift back to the community. That's the end of the cycle of the hero's journey. Then the next one begins. But for now, when you have a triumph or a spiritual awakening or an epiphany or an enlightenment of some, time, some kind, then it's your job to share it. And then you send the blessing to the communities. Healing is not just for you, it's for everyone. And that's why there's a lesson in Course in Miracles. When I am healed, I am not healed alone. Because my healing is for you, and your healing is for me, and together we rise. You've heard the phrase, a rising tide raises all the ships. Meaning that when there's a shared awakening, there's a shared healing, you create a field of illumination. It's a higher state of conscious, like a higher room in my father's mansion, you might say, that now lifts everybody who's connected with you and that state of consciousness. So, you know, when we do my coaching room, I do free coaching every Thursday at 11 a.m. You can, Pacific, you can go to my website and find it out. But when I share these stories here, when I do my coach training, they're all for awakening as a group. We're all, we're all in this together, you understand? And so this is how channeled entities come through. Uh, this is how mediumship works. And if you're interested in any of this, I may as well tell you about this now. Um, you know, I'm doing this series now called Friends in High Places. It's an eight-week series. We've done two, but you can still join for the remaining series and, and watch webinars and watch the original two on recording. Uh, the, whole, the whole series is about the power of channeling and the spirit guides working through us and angels teaching us. It's a really dynamic, heart-centered series. So go to my website if you still want to join. You can jump on. It's every Wednesday evening. And then I might as well tell you, too, that we're gearing up for a really exciting series in December called Into Light. I'll be joined on four evenings by four of my most esteemed colleagues to really just bolster going into the winter and having our head out straight and recognizing how loved and empowered we are. And then finally, my coach training starts in January. We're doing a six month course. This will be the only one we'll do entirely online. So if that appeals to you, if you're living in another country, rather not travel, so we get all the training online this time. Then we'll, next fall, we'll go back to the in-person program. So those are three exciting things coming up. So let's close as we always do with the moment of knowing. We'll go deep today. <clears throat> so let us, I'd like you to imagine that you're like a, like an antenna dish. You know, some of these dishes are kind of compact like a colander. And then as you press a button, the, the covering opens and the antenna becomes fully receptive to receive signals from outer space. But we're receiving our signals today from inner space. So I'd like you to imagine that another, another good analogy is a flower. You know, like when a flower opens, it just collects the sun and it radiates its beauty to all who look upon it or smell it. This flower is such a beautiful gift to humanity. And so imagine yourself opening up to a higher power, like the sun that is shining on the flower and, and lets it blossom. And we have angels. If you want to say a prayer, angels, spirit guides, helpers, Loved ones on the other side. I am now open and receptive to receive your guidance. I know I have friends in high places in many different forms. And if you don't believe in that, just consider the Holy Spirit or the, the Almighty God that lives in you and around you. Whoever is out there is willing and available and ready to help us. <clears throat> And so I ask now, would you please tell me anything I need to know at this moment that will help guide my life?
what is my message for today? Just for today. What do you want me to know in this moment, in this day, that will make this a wonderful day for me? Even a word, a sentence, an image, a feeling. What does your guidance speak to you today? The message may be simple. You're enough. You deserve good things. I love you. Live like you're loved. Claim the life you would choose. Or it might be a little more direct. Call this person. Ask them how they're doing or respond to their request for help. Or start your book, start your movie, start your song. What does your angel want you to know today? We give thanks for all the blessings in our lives, obvious blessings and subtle ones, physical people who help us, invisible people who help us. We walk in the universe that is filled with love, guided by God. We've not been abandoned, we're not lost. We remain deeply connected to the source that created us. And for that, we can be very grateful indeed. Like to say with me out loud right where you are, and so it is, so it is. <laughs>